whether it's San Bernardino or these tragic mass killings by deranged people, the first impulse of the President of the United States and Hillary Clinton is to take more rights away from law-abiding citizens. And frankly, the protection of the Second Amendment keeps us safe and keeps us strong. And we should do everything we can to enhance that right. Uh, Law-abiding citizens that are trained to be able to uh, protect themselves creates a safer America. And I will fight as hard as I can against any effort by this president or by any liberal that wants to take away people's rights that are embedded in the Bill of Rights. All right, there you go, Jeb Bush, uh, very, very well put. Uh, as he looks directly into the camera and, uh, and really, I believe, in this case, speaking from the heart. Joining us now on the panel, John Lott, Jr., president of the Crime Prevention Research Center, best-selling author, uh, just one of his many great books, More Guns, Less Crime, and Jane Velez Mitchell, founder of JaneUnchained.com, author of Attic Nation, an Intervention for America. All right, John, let's start with uh, what the president did today while shedding tears for those who he claims had their constitutional rights violated uh, because they were shot. Uh, you know, his premise that if we could save just one life, then all this is worth doing. Well, then why don't we just ban alcohol? Why don't we just right. ban cars? Why don't we say well, kids, kids can't swim in swimming pools? You know how many drown every year? I mean, if we could save one life. But what about the constitutionality of what he's doing with these background checks and other executive orders? Right. Well, I mean, I, I would phrase it differently. I would say, would it make any sense to say we shouldn't have a law if the law costs one life? Look, what's not being talked about is that the rules that he has has real consequences. He's, he seems to imply that these background checks are free. You're in New York City, I believe. What, the cost of you getting transferring a gun in New York City because they have this type of expanded background check that Obama wants to impose on the rest of the country. The cheapest you can have it done in New York City is for $125. There's one gun store they'll do that. The next cheapest is $150, and the other ones are like $200 or so to have it done. That may not stop you or myself from being able to get a gun, but for the people that my research indicates benefit the most from being able to go and protect themselves, law-abiding, poor blacks who live in high-crime urban areas $150 or $200 may really make the difference between whether or not they're able to go and defend themselves or not. And so, you know, the president, time after time when we've had these horrible mass public shootings, he speaks out and he says we need to have these additional background checks. What I wish is that one reporter sometime would just say, Mr. President, out of all these cases that you talked about, can you point to one case that would have been stopped if we had had the rules that you want to have right. in effect. All right, Jane, what about, what about it, Jane? A lot to well, handle let me there. let say this. We have a problem in this country. More than 30,000 Americans die every year because of gun violence. And to answer John's question, yes. What President Obama brilliantly proposed today could have stopped the massacre at Sandy Hook. Okay, because what? what no, he it said couldn't have. No, it couldn't have. I'm going to show you how. He said, use technology that exists for our cell phones. Okay, so I'm. I need to use my thumbprint to activate this phone. Adam Lanza used his mother's Bushmaster semi-automatic. Had that law been in fact, and that Bushmaster no, been no, no, no. targeted to okay. Adam Lanza. All right, all right. That, 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 that's not a law. That's not, all right. Let the that Bushmaster and kill 20 kids. Jane, 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 Jane. Those are unreliable. If you need the gun in the middle of the night, you're not going to be able to match your foot, your fingerprint up in the dark, but, number one. And number two, they have not perfected that technology at all. Uh, am I correct, John? Right. Well, first of all, that's not what the president, uh, what I said was, is that after each of these mass public shootings, he keeps putting to these background checks. But look, you know, uh, the technology, as Steve is saying, doesn't work yet. He's saying go and develop it for the future. Hopefully it will work. People have spent a lot of money trying to do it. The problem with it is you have a shock that occurs when a gun f is fired. And the, tech and the electronics there are sensitive enough that they get destroyed fairly quickly just from that pounding. Right, so this doesn't exist. Jane, Jane, this when doesn't exist, Jane. It doesn't exist. That if a gun is stolen, 
it would allow us to track that with GPS. It doesn't exist, Jane. What well, are you, you harping on this it. for? It exists with household products. Why shouldn't it exist with guns? John why just described why it can't exist with guns. Improvements? All right, John, what is this? So what is this going to do? It's going to make it harder for people to who, who want guns and need guns, as you described, to get guns. Is this going to pass constitutional muster? You've got 20 seconds. No, I mean, if you look at the actual language of the current statute, it says... People have to get licenses if their principal income and profits right. are from selling guns. Obama says if you sell one gun right. under many of these circumstances, you're going to have these regulations. And it's unenforceable. John Lott, Jane Velez Mitchell, thank you very much. We're coming back with more.